After this long introduction we have reached the point where I will reveal the object. This is for me the most scary part of the entire project, as how can I explain to you, who have never seen anything like this before, what it is. There are no similar type objects on Earth, so there is no way to compare it with something else. I realize that this object may seem unreal to most of you because of its size and shape. When I revealed it for the first time I could not believe it myself, but that has changed. Look at this object with an open mind, think out of the box and then you will see it. So let's take a look at, this, at the sizes. The length of the object is approximately 35 miles. The object has a height of 13.5 miles and based on uh, the shadow, calculation shadow, it's about 3.5 miles wide. So it's gigantic. And just in comparison, here we have the Burj Khalifa, which is the tallest building in the world, 830 meters. And this is even not, this is even exaggerated because uh, it should be smaller. The small box should even be smaller. The Mount Everest is the highest mountain on Earth with 8,848 meters, and the highest commercial airplane can fly approximately 14 kilometers. So the object has a height of approximately 22 kilometers. This is the zoomed-in GIF file, and here you see the object. And it looks blurred. Well, it's not blurred, and I'll show you. Do not expect to see a flying saucer, or the kind of alien technology you think this object might look like. Be open to new ways of technology. Realize that there are things we humans believe to be impossible. Your mind has been conditioned to see and recognize known patterns, shapes and objects, as you have seen alien technology on images, posters, in films and documentaries. Imagine a machine higher than an airplane can fly, two times bigger in size than New York City, and our human brain refuses to accept such way of thinking. Logically we know that such machine could not exist on Earth. Others before you saw it, and they decided that you were not allowed to see it. The object is three-dimensional, and the Skinner hull consists of parts with different colors. The clipping makes it impossible to enhance all parts of the object simultaneously. The object has flexible and extendable parts in all directions, and it could very well be a machine of biomechanical nature. I would best describe it as a gigantic caterpillar with multiple legs that crawls over the moon's surface. Think out of the box. The object must have shape-shifting shape -shifting capabilities because of the scales that can move in every direction. It has a fully flexible and extendable neck, a suction unit, pipes for transporting excavating material, and multiple legs. There we see the different scales. Another contrast level. Look at the lower part of the body, which looks like a whole lot of cables bound together, so it makes a very flexible construction. Also look at the back. This part here. See these lines? And this part here is very flexible. We have all different scales here. Look at the contours. Digital artifacts do not create shadows. More evidence that the smudged object is not a missing data block. Here we have a close-up of the leg. If you have uh, problems in, 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 uh, in, in seeing it, well, that's very understandable because fully understandable because you have never seen it before. You have nothing to compare it with. Any of the scales and next to the scales, below the scales, we have shadows. So when we look at the same object but with different scales and of intensity, then we see a whole different object. Now we see the contours. We see the back of the object. And we see these hills or spines on the object. This is the head of the object. We see the suction unit. We see an extendable neck. We see the different scales. Look at the, at, at the construction here, how this is connected. And see that this is totally different from this here. And also the uh, very flexible lower part. Then the foot, or what looks like the foot, the leg, and this lower part here, very distinct shapes. So anyone who claims that this is a uh, 
missing data block or a JPEG artifact is nuts. So here we have other details, other contrast levels of course, other intensity. And we see that this part is different from the rest. See, there's all these scales running over each other. It makes it very flexible. It's a very flexible construction. What you see here, the black and white things uh, around the object, is the moon surface. So what is it? Well, in my view, it is a machine uh, which is excavating material on the moon surface. And I'll, I will come to that later. Different contrast levels, different objects visible, different uh, details. And look at the different plates. Look at these scales, how they move over each other, how they can move in every single direction. And then this part here looks like, um, well, I don't know what it is. <laughs> see, see how this is connected here? I mean, it's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. So this is zoomed in. Now here see, we, we see the neck, extendable neck. And we see these parts connected with each other. More evidence that the object is not a missing data block or digital noise. Let's analyze the horseshoes we see in front of the machine. Well, we have seen these strange horseshoes in front of the smudged object, right? Well, it's because of this here. This little thing here. This is the horseshoe that produces these shadows. So why are there three shadows? Because the object was moving. Satellite which comes over uh, over the area and takes pictures, always photographs the crater in the same position. But if an object is moving through the crater, it will be photographed in different positions. So the crater does not move, but the object does move. So that's why we see three shadows here. Except at least that's my interpretation. Otherwise, there would be, behind this one here, would, not, uh, would be two more uh, horseshoes. There it is, zoomed in. As you can see, it, is, it has the shape of a horseshoe. Close up of the suction unit. Well, this is the front of the object, the machine. And here we have the close up of the suction unit. Even better now. See, here it is. And this is a few hundred meters. Don't get fooled by the, by this picture, but the size is a few hundred meters. And there's all kinds of weird stuff lying next to the uh, suction unit. And I have no idea what it is. To me it looks like a scorpion, but there will be a scorpion of about a mile long. Could also be a machine or, or other thing. I don't know. I tried to sharpen it even more, but then it became blurred and I couldn't do anything with it. So. The human eye is built to pick up light intensity and colors, but the Clementine image with the machine is grayscale. For some of you the machine may not yet be visible. There is a way to create colors in a grayscale image by using a software called RGB lights. There is the machine in purple. Now we see it in purple and pink. Or violet. Beautiful colors, beautiful structures. This is the rainbow version. And this is one, uh, also, uh, another one, but with different contrast levels, uh, different intensity. And you see that the various parts have various colors. This is not created by me, by the way. This is how the software brings out that image, how it makes it image. We see clearly the suction unit. This is a multiple color. And now other things also uh, start to appear, which we have not seen before. And as you can see, there's depth now. So the object is three dimensional. And imagine an object which is 57 kilometers in length and 20 kilometers in height. Then it is difficult to see any specific details with a resolution, a resolution of only 7 to 20 meters. And imagine that this picture was taken at the, at the height of 420, uh, 425 kilometers.
look at the different sections of the object. This is the back of the object. We see a leg here, a leg here. We see an object here, There's something here. This is the head, what I presume is the head. Suction unit, the neck. And see the scales, the edges of the scales. Now, now it gets interesting. This is the back of the object, the head of the object. And this really looks like a head. Can you see what it is? Even better now. After color conversion we see right below the machine a few small ponds. Do these areas contain fluids? Are we witnessing the excavation of the moon? During chemical extraction materials change color and gases are formed. Underneath the machine areas look foggy. Is that because of chemical vapor? Well, here is our object, the machine, and we see these colored areas. And we see that this is hazy or foggy. See, right into the reds in the red circles, we see blue ponds, which look like ponds, and we see the hazy area on below or underneath the neck. It's even better visible, the ponds, blue and the hazy foggy area right here because everything uh, all other details are sharp only just this area is hazy or foggy and we can't see any details and this is probably one of the earliest painted dragons from 1244 AD taken from a hand scroll with nine dragons which is also called the nine dragons and located at the Museum of Fine Art in Boston USA as imagined by the Chinese, the Chinese dragon has nine anatomical features. The head of a camel, ears like a cow, fairy eyes of a demon, horns of a deer, long neck like a serpent, scales of a carp, belly of a frog, paws of a tiger with three or five toes, and the claws of an eagle with three or five nails. Also mentioned, a long beard, spines on the back, a foot rule, which is a device or object on the head, and stretch of folded wings. According to Chinese legends, the first dragon ever seen appeared in the sky around 4000 BC. Have ancient Chinese civilizations been witness of the visit of an alien machine? Did a dragon walk around in China? Is the Clementon alien object a Chinese dragon? Does the Clementon object have the same features? When we look at the dragon, we see the horns of a deer. We see ears like a cow. We see fairy eyes and we see the head of a camel. Furthermore, we see a long beard. These lines that run from top to bottom is the long beard. We see scales and neck of a serpentine, a snake. We see scales of a carp. We see the folded wings. We see paws like a tiger. And we see the structured belly of a frog. Now this resemblance is remarkable, but let's see. Well, the head of a camel, orange, yeah, yellow, yeah. We see the horns of a deer. We see the ears of a cow. We see a long beard. We see the neck of a serpent. We see the scales of a carp, which are copper gold. We see the belly of a frog. We see the paws of a tiger, the folded wings. Everything is there in the colors as described. The dragon has an almost unlimited range of supernatural powers. It can shape shift change color as an effective form of camouflage, or glow in the dark. The colors of Chinese dragons vary, but most dragons vary from greenish to golden, with a series of alternating short and long spines extending down their backs and along their tails where they become longer. The dragon has long tendril-like whiskers extending from either side of its mouth, probably used for feeding its way along the bottom of muddy ponds. According to Chinese legends, under its chin or floating just out of reach a bright shining pearl. Under the dragon's head a device called the Poshana foot rule, which the dragon needs to ascend to heaven. The scales of the dragon's throat are reversed. When exhaling breath it produces clouds of fire or rain. So, again, the picture of the dragon. The horns of a deer. We see the ears of a cow. Demon eyes. Head of a camel. The long beard. The scales of a dragon's throat. And here they are reversed, as you can see. 
they run from right to left and on this side they run from left to right so they are reversed we see two whiskers the suction units could be the whiskers the belly of a frog scales of a carp on the head we see an object the device the pochon or foot rule and we see these things here which could be the spines he has a small one he has a bigger one and he has the biggest so we find even more anatomical features when a Chinese would see this machine flying through the skies lit by sunlight what would it look like perhaps like a golden dragon the dragon's breath changed into clouds comes out as fire or rain is fire to be interpreted as lightning or electrical discharge for example electrolysis rain to be interpreted as the spraying of fluids a chemical extraction another myth where dragon blood is spilled and has been spilled in the distant past no vegetation will grow is this a reference to environmental pollution there's the dragon in its full glory underneath the machine and on the museum we see two live tube like objects there is no mentioning of these tubes in Chinese dragon descriptions but many ancient Chinese drawings show similar objects which look like flames coming from the feet. On a dragon's head we see two long antennae and we see those long we see those as well in our alien object. There's so much similarities. This is an ancient uh, dragon drawing. Here we have the dragon. Here we have the tubes again. There are all kinds of strange things running over the moon's surface these are the tubes and we have the antenna the whiskers what does the Chinese dragon look like in Chinese writing well that's also very interesting look the dragon symbol and the dragon seal so let's flip it if we flip the dragon seal and the dragon uh, writing then we see this Look at the shape. One here, one here. The resemblance is remarkable. As previously mentioned, the obfuscation technique they used did not allow complete exposure of the machine. With each level of contrast, intensity and scale, new details became visible while others disappeared. I took two color images, merged them and then the bright pearl became visible. I admit it does not 100% look like a pearl, but it is located under the chin and you can clearly see that it's much brighter than its surroundings and it literally shines. This is the program to pick. So I took pick two pictures of the dragon and I combined it, I merged them. And after that, this become visible. See? This is the chin, the head, and here's an object. It's not quite visible yet, but let's see. There it is, the dragon in its full glory. And here it is, the bright pearl under the chin. Previously hidden, but by com uh, combining these two images, it became visible. Now we also see a clear object on the head, a device, the Pashan, and we see the horn of a deer. We see the ear of a cow, the head of a camel or horse. Some, some people would also see the head of a horse in it. We see a very uh, beautiful eye here, a demon eye. The long beard running down, skills on the neck, and the serpent of uh, the skills of a, of a serpent. When the reverse scales here, and the scales of a carp, the belly of a frog, well, the legs, paws of a tiger and see it was not previously visible but another leg has become visible because I merged these two images so we're gonna take a closer look at that as well well in here with the spines one beautiful spine here another one another one okay it's a close-up of the uh, pearl the bright pearl you see it literally shines it's much much brighter than its surroundings and it's underneath the chin So, merging, this was the result, and here's the pearl. 
this is a lifted leg. It looks like a lifted leg. So this object is moving. See? It's from the moon surface. It's off the moon surface. It's above, have hovering above the moon surface. So we found another leg. This is a close-up of the Pashan. The foot rule, the device. Not quite sure what this is. In, in, uh, initially I thought this was uh, also a horn of a deer, but now after the conversion and after the uh, merge of, of these two images, it looks like something totally different. <laughs> Interesting. And we have the scales here, see, reversed. So, summary. We have a dragon found on the moon, standing in the Zeman crater, excavating the moon, obviously doing something about chemical extraction and electrolysis which could be an explanation for the TLP, the transit lunar phenomena. And um, we find all the an anatomical features uh, in, uh, from ancient dragon descriptions back in our machine. Or it's all coincidence. The golden dragon standing on New York City. And this is in, res uh, in, in, in perspective to Earth. This is the Isle of Manhattan, New York City. This is 20 kilometers in height, and this is 57 kilometers in length. Imagine when such thing would be walking around on Earth. It would be a cat catastrophe. Mouth, probably used for feeding its way along the bottom of muddy ponds. According to Chinese legends, under its chin or floating just out of reach a bright shiny pearl. On the dragon's head, a device called the Poshan of Foot Rule, which the dragon needs to ascend to heaven. The scales of the dragon's throat are reversed. When exhaling breath, it produces clouds of fire or rain. So, again, the picture of the dragon, the horns of a deer, we see the ears of a cow, demon eyes, head of a camel, the long beard, the scales of a dragon's throat, and here they are reversed, as you can see. They run from right to left, and on this side they run from left to right, so they are reversed. We see two whiskers. The suction units could be the whiskers. The belly of a frog, scales of a carp. On the head we see an object, the device, the pochon or foot rule. And we see these things here, which could be the spines. He has a small one, he has a bigger one, and he has the biggest. So, we find even more anatomical features. When a Chinese would see this machine flying through the skies, lit by sunlight, what would it look like? Perhaps like a golden dragon? The dragon's breath changed into clouds comes out as fire or rain. Is fire to be interpreted as lightning or electrical discharge, for example electrolysis? Rain to be interpreted as the spraying of fluids, a chemical extraction. Another myth, where dragon blood is spilled and has been spilled in the distant past, no vegetation will grow. Is this a reference to environmental pollution? There is the dragon. In its full glory. Underneath the machine and on the Musurf we see two live tube-like objects. There is no mentioning of these tubes in Chinese dragon descriptions, but many ancient Chinese drawings show similar objects which look like flames coming from the feet. On the dragon's head we see two long antennae, and we see those long and we see those as well in our alien object. There's so much similarities. This is an ancient uh, dragon drawing. Here we have the dragon. Here we have the tubes again. There are all kinds of strange things running over the moon's surface. These are the tubes, and we have the antenna, the whiskers. What does the Chinese dragon look like in Chinese writing? Well, that's also very interesting. Look, the dragon symbol and the dragon seal. So, let's flip it thing. Well, that's also very interesting. Look. The dragon symbol and the dragon seal. So let's flip it. If we flip the dragon seal and the dragon uh, writing, then we see this. Look at the shape. 
one here, one here. The resemblance is remarkable. As previously mentioned, the obfuscation technique they used did not allow complete exposure of the machine. With each level of contrast, intensity and scale, new details became visible while others disappeared. I took two color images, merged them and then the bright pearl became visible. I admit it does not 100% look like a pearl, but it is located under the chin and you can clearly see that it's much brighter than its surroundings and it literally shines. This is the program 2PIC. So I took PIC2 pictures of the dragon and I combined it, I merged them. And after that, this become visible. See? This is the chin, the head, and here is an object. It's not quite visible yet, but let's see. There it is. The dragon in its full glory. And here it is. The bright pearl under the chin. Previously hidden, but by com uh, combining these two images, it became visible. Now we also see a clear object on the head, a device, the Pashan. And we see the horn of a deer. We see the ear of a cow, the head of a camel or horse. Some, some people would also see the head of a horse in it. We see a very uh, beautiful eye here, a demon eye. The long beard running down, skills on the neck, and the serpent of uh, the skills of a, of a serpent. When the reverse scales here, and the scales of a carp, the belly of a frog, well, the legs, paws of a tiger. And see, it was not previously visible, but another leg has become visible because I merged these two images. So we're going to take a closer look at that as well. Well, in here with the spines, one beautiful spine here, another one, another one. Okay. It's a close-up of the uh, pearl, the bright pearl. You see, it literally shines. It's much, much brighter than its surroundings. And it's underneath the chin. So, merging, this was the result. And here's the pearl. This is a lifted leg. It looks like a lifted leg. So, this object is moving. See? It's from the moon surface. It's and here for the scales, and next to the scales, below the scales, we have shadows. So, when we look at the same object, but with different scales and of intensity, then we see a whole different object. Now we see the contours. We see the back of the object. And we see these hills or spines on the object. This is the head of the object. We see the suction unit. We see an extendable neck. We see the different scales. Look at the, at, at the construction here, how this is connected. And see that this is totally different from this here. And also the uh, very flexible lower part. Then the foot, or what looks like the foot. The leg. And this lower part here. Very distinct shapes. So... Anyone who claims that this is a uh, missing data block or a JPEG artifact is nuts. So here we have other details, other contrast levels of course, other intensity. Then we see that this part is different from the rest. See, there's all these scales running over each other. It makes it very flexible. It's a very flexible construction. What you see here, the black and white things uh, around the object, is the moon surface. So what is it? Well, in my view, it is a machine uh, which is excavating material on the moon's surface. And I'll, I will come to that later. Different contrast levels, different objects visible, different uh, details. And look at the different plates. Look at these scales, how they move over each other, how they can move in every single direction. And then this part here looks like um, well, I don't know what it is. <laughs> see, see how this is connected here. I mean, it's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. So, this is zoomed in. Now, here see, we, we see the neck, extendable neck. 
and we see these parts connected with each other. More evidence that the object is not a missing data block or digital noise. Let's analyze the horseshoes we see in front of the machine. Well, we have seen these strange horseshoes in front of the smudged object, right? Well, it's because of this here. This little thing here. This is the horseshoe that produces these shadows. So why are there three shadows? Because the object was moving. Satellite, which comes over, uh, over the area and takes pictures, always fire or rain. So, again, the picture of the dragon, the horns of a deer, we see the ears of a cow, demon eyes, head of a camel, the long beard, the scales of a dragon's throat, and here they are reversed, as you can see, they run from right to left, and on this side they run from left to right, so they are reversed. We see two whiskers, the suction units could be the whiskers, the belly of a frog, scales of a carp, on the head we see an object, the device, the pochon or foot rule, and we see these things here, which could be the spines. He has a small one, he has a bigger one, and he has the biggest. So, we find even more anatomical features. When a Chinese would see this machine flying through the skies, lit by sunlight, what would it look like? Perhaps like a golden dragon? The dragon's breath changed into clouds comes out as fire or rain. Is fire to be interpreted as lightning or electrical discharge, for example electrolysis? Rain to be interpreted as the spraying of fluids, a chemical extraction? Another myth, where dragon blood is spilled and has been spilled in the distant past, no vegetation will grow. Is this a reference to environmental pollution? There is the dragon. In its full glory. Underneath the machine and on the museum we see two live tube-like objects. There is no mentioning of these tubes in Chinese dragon descriptions, but many ancient Chinese drawings show similar objects which look like flames coming from the feet. On the dragon's head we see two long antennae, and we see those long we see those as well in our alien object. There's so much similarities. This is an ancient uh, dragon drawing. Here we have the dragon, here we have the tubes, again, there are all kinds of strange things running over the moon's surface. These are the tubes, and we have the antenna, the whiskers. What does the Chinese dragon look like in Chinese writing? Well, that's also very interesting. Look, the dragon symbol and the dragon seal. So, let's flip it. If we flip the dragon seal and the dragon uh, writing, then we see this. Look at the shape. One here, one here. The resemblance is remarkable. As previously mentioned, the obfuscation technique they used, there is a way to create colors in a grayscale image by using a software called RGB Lights. There is the machine in purple. Now we see it in purple and pink. Or violet. Beautiful colors, beautiful structures. This is the rainbow version. And this is well, also, uh, another one, but with different contrast levels, uh, different intensity. And you see that the various parts have various colors. This is not created by me, by the way. This is how the software brings out that image. How it makes it image. We see clearly the suction unit. This is a multiple color. And now other things also uh, start to appear, which we have not seen before. And as you can see, there's depth now. So. The object is three-dimensional, and imagine an object which is 57 kilometers in length and 20 kilometers in height. Then it is difficult to see any specific details. 
with a, revolution, a resolution of only 7 to 20 meters. And imagine that this picture was taken at the, at the height of 420, uh, 425 kilometers. Look at the different sections of the object. This is the back of the object. We see a leg here, a leg here. We see an object here, There's something here. This is the head, what I presume is the head. Suction unit, the neck. And see the scales, the edges of the scales. Now, now it gets interesting. This is the back of the object, the head of the object, and this really looks like a head. Can you see what it is? Even better now. After color conversion we see right below the machine a few small ponds. Do these areas contain fluids? Are we witnessing the excavation of the moon? During chemical extraction materials change color and gases are formed. Underneath the machine areas look foggy. Is that because of chemical vapor? Well, here is our object, the machine, and we see these colored areas. And we see that this is hazy or foggy. See, right into the reds in the red circles we see blue ponds, which look like ponds. 